Okay, here we are back in Crimson Gray, and this time around we are going to save our lab partner. And the only reason you really want to do this round is just to fill out the gallery. So this is going to cause the... well, you're going to get a couple of CGs here. So in order to do this, you need to be on really good terms with Lizzie. Basically be the best possible. And then you can confront her to spare the lab partner. <laughs> Basically prove to her that it's not really a thing. So you want to say yes, talk to Lizzie and talk to the pharmacist. You have to talk to her for that affection point. Talk to the pharmacist. You want to put her on Nylazine as for every other route other than the... Oh, crud, what was that one? I don't think it was the alone any, but it might have been. So you want to tell her that you're dating. You want to dodge the bullet with what type of question is that. You want to take her hand. And here you want to sleep with her just to maximize the affection. Okay, so I cut out the scene that doesn't have any sort of variation. It's one later on that's going to, which sadly you don't get to see. So you want to accept the choice. Then you want to decline. So this is when she asks you if you want to have sex again. I'm sorry, Lizzie. I don't think I'm feeling like it right now. That's okay. I was actually thinking that maybe we should wait. Huh? Last time it was too much. Oh, and John, I'm glad you felt like you could say no to me. No problem. Since he wasn't sure where to go from there, John just held her a little closer. Lizzie laid her head against his chest, and he kissed the top of it gently. So right here you need to talk about morality. Lizzie fidgeted for a bit, then seemed to focus on his words and nodded. Ask anything you want. That made things a little uncomfortable for the rest of lunch, but John hoped that he ever did some somehow get strapped to train tracks, as well, the one nearby. So if you remember, she said she'd kill a thousand people for John. So you want to say very little about Lizzie. She's nice, but she's a very private person. Okay, fair enough. So for this one, you want to leave without saying anything, I believe. Whatever he could do, he wouldn't do it here. John put his head down and left. Outside Mrs. Spine's office, John shook his head, tried to refocus. So for this one... I think you need to be blunt with her. I don't want you to kill her. You're my girlfriend, she's someone in the same class. Several days passed without incident, then several weeks. Eventually he began to relax, trust that this wasn't really going to harm anyone. Didn't manage to get his lab partner reassigned. It felt incredibly awkward to reject a nice girl like that, but he didn't but try to make excuses that he couldn't keep up with her. And he thought he thought she chalked it up to depression. Losing a decent lab partner was no big deal. He was happy to do it to keep Lizzie, not to mention possibly avoiding a murder. But in the future he worried that could be a real problem. Still as time passed with no incidents, he began to think that it had been entirely his imagination. Until one day at lunch. Something on your mind, Lizzie? Would you still love me if I had killed her? Whoa, that's a pretty heavy question to spring on someone. Honestly, I can't say for certain, since it didn't happen. But I think I'd still love you. You don't hurt people for malicious reasons. In the end, you're doing what you think is necessary for my sake. I love how dedicated you are to things. I can never stick with anything. Okay. Is it okay? You still seem upset. So, let's make sure. Lizzie, are you still planning to do something to her? No, no, I said I wouldn't. Well, good. After that, the subject never came up again. John wasn't sure how he felt about the situa how the situation had resolved, but at least no one had been harmed. From that point on, Lizzie seemed sweet and devoted at all times. He still spent the rest of the year trying to avoid being paired with any girls, just to be safe. Lizzie met him at the edge of the fair, she from foot to foot eagerly. Her face lit up when she saw him, and she immediately hurried to meet him. So this should be where the scene variation actually takes place. Everything prior to now, for the most part, we've seen before in terms of CGs. You're finally here! This is going to be so much fun! I'm glad to spend more time with you, but honestly, I haven't gone to the fair in years. I think we can find some fun. Besides, the important thing is that people will see us together. What? 
Dane doesn't really count unless the guy's willing to go to the fair with you. Guys, don't talk like that? No. But I'm happy to be seen with you. Let's go see what they all have. For a while, they just wandered, checking all the attractions. Since the affair was still getting started, it was easy to grab some food and cotton candy, which Lizzie happily fed him pieces of all they want. Think about what being there meant, being there together meant for her. John realized that he didn't mind. They really were boyfriend and girlfriend after all. Why not let people know? And if their relationship had some unique problems, hell, couples have broken up over much more trivial things than he had just been through. As the fairgrounds started to get more crowded, Lizzie decided to try out one of the attractions. She dragged him into a house of mirrors, which struck him as a strange choice. With mirrors on every side, the experience was a little disorienting. As far as he could tell, it was just a simple maze. As he got deeper into it, though, there started being more mirrors that intentionally twisted and shaped into a distorted version of himself. Strange, but not overwhelming. That was the moment when he realized that Lizzie was no longer with him. His first response was actually a moment of panic, as if she had gotten lost when in fact she was much more capable of taking care of herself than he was. Lizzie? How the hell she disappeared like that? All kinds of different pathways were reflected in the maze. He was sure he would have seen her leave. It was almost as if she just... stepped into one of the mirrors and vanished. It was actually starting to make him uncomfortable. John? Lizzie, where'd you go? This way, come find me. John stumbled through the house of mirrors, following her giggles. Where the heck was she? Had she gotten outside the maze somehow? Given who she was, he could she he should have been more nervous. Yet he found that he was calm. Her laughter was playful, not crazed or vicious. Yoink! Without warning, Lizzie somehow popped up behind him and took him backward, through what he had thought was a normal wall. A door swung closed behind him. A secret door? He realized that he was inside a mirrored room with no other exit. This house of mirrors is apparently more complex than he thought, if it had a hidden room. Isn't this place neat? I found another secret passage, too. Wow, that didn't take you long. She had grabbed him from behind and hadn't let go, so he became increasingly conscious of how she was pressed against his back. God, she was so soft. John, I'm so happy you came here with me. Lizzie. I know being with me can be hard on you, but you've never given up on me. I want to do something for you now. John, is that okay? He swallowed and turned in her arms to kiss her. She kissed back. When he put his arms around her, she slipped out of them straight down, putting her crotch level. Just let me be a normal girlfriend for a little while, okay? I promise you'll enjoy it. John wasn't really sure if this was all that normal, but then she began unzipping his pants, and all the rest of his thoughts flew away. He leaned back against the mirrors, needing a moment to catch his breath. Lizzie seemed to have no trouble fixing her shirt and then coming to give him a hug. That felt amazing. Good. I liked it too. Maybe we can do more of this sometime. He liked that idea, but for now he felt too relaxed. Lizzie took his hand, led him out of the maze effortlessly. Outside, the fear seemed far too loud and bright. It took him a second to notice that even someone was snickering at him. Are you fucking serious? You two came here to play around in the house of mirrors? One of the classmates was there with his girlfriend, pawing at his chest while she giggled and swatted his hands. They both leered at John and Lizzie holding hands. I mean, what are you, twelve? Once, taunts might have bothered him, but now John didn't care. He didn't even have any desire to prove that his friend was wrong. When he thought about what Lizzie had done for him, and felt her squeeze his hand, he just didn't care. Come on, let's ditch these losers. His classmate's girlfriend led them away, and John didn't really care about that either. He gave Lizzie a smile, but she seemed slightly distant. Had the encounter bothered her more than him? He hoped that she wasn't getting any dangerous urges again. Yet Lizzie didn't say anything, and instead let him take her toward one of the food lines. But after they had been in line for only a short while, she slid closer to him and spoke softly. John, if you don't want me to kill, do you want do you not want others to kill either? What are you talking about? If I knew about something, I could stop it. Do you want me to? Yes, of course. Lizzie, is something wrong? Then we have to go. She gripped his hand tightly and dragged him out of the line. There was a strange look in her eyes, she took and she took him across the fairground, occasionally stopping to look for something, then shaking her head. He decided just to trust her, and trust that she would explain eventually. They headed to the edge of the fairgrounds, where there were some basic warehouses. Stay here. She let go of his hand and moved to the alley between the two of them. But John wasn't going to be left alone. He followed her and froze. His classmate lay sprawled on the ground, his chest torn open. The sight made John sick. Before he looked away to vomit, he saw that his classmate's pants were down around his ankles. The laugh made him look up toward the grizzly scene ahead again, and spot his classmate's girlfriend. She stood over his body with a box cutter, utterly covered in blood. You're all... you're mine now. All mine. 
Without warning, the girl turned to them, eyes burning. And you can't have him. She let out another low laugh as her gaze focused on Lizzie. He's mine. Mine, mine, mine. I don't want him. You need to get control or... Mine forever. The girl lunged at them, moving with jerky, erratic footsteps, and still closed the gap between them in a flash. Yet, while John was still flinching, Lizzie re reacted. In a single smooth movement, she knocked away the box cutter and spun the girl to the ground, ending up with her knee dug in her back. While the other girl thrashed and wailed, Lizzie gripped her hair and pulled her head up into a submission hold. Be quiet. I'll kill you, you slut, you bitch. I'll tear you apart and bathe in your entrails and... Lizzie slit the girl's throat. John could only stare, utterly in shock as the girl bled out. The insanity slowly leaving her eyes. Lizzie looked up at him sadly. I'm sorry, John. She really would have been a threat to you. What is going on? Was she, uh, like me? No, not truly. As she spoke, Lizzie calmly got to her feet, careful not to get blood on herself. She examined her knife, then took out a cloth to wipe it off carefully. She was broken. Even more broken than I was before I found you. There aren't uh, a whole lot more, are there? She was the only other one I knew of, but we didn't exactly talk. Oh god, oh god. What happened to caught him up to caught up to him in a rush, and he found himself hyperventilating, stumbling back against the side of the warehouse. Before he could panic too much, Lizzie slipped up in front of him and kissed him gently. John, please run away with me. We need to leave before they found before they're found. Just run away. Can we do that? We can. It's our only hope. The logistics of a dizzy dim, so it wasn't exactly sure what he was agreeing to. He couldn't think with the two corpses lying so close by. After seeing Lizzie murder someone so coldly, no, he couldn't do it. John shuddered and took a step away from her. I can't. I can't. John, please don't be afraid. You just slit her throat. You don't even feel anything. You're afraid, John, and confused. Let me take care of you. Before he could protest, she slipped a foul smelling rack over his mouth. He struggled uselessly into his world fell away. By the time they woke up, they were far from the fairground. Lizzie had already gathered most of the things they owned and taken them out of the city. He didn't know where she had gotten the car and didn't know what their plans were. Didn't do anything but rock back and forth and try to breathe. When they stopped, Lizzie came to the back seat and kissed him gently before snuggling up against him. He shivered, but he held her close. In the years ahead, they moved into a new town. He relied entirely on Lizzie as she gave him a new identity, found him a job, and played the supportive housewife. Sometimes he thought about running or disobeying her, but whenever he did, his mind flashed back to the image of Lizzie calmly slitting the other girl's throat. As he became more and more withdrawn, he thought he saw a sadness in Lizzie's eyes, but he didn't care. Every night they slept in the same bed, sometimes having sex, and sometimes Lizzie just whispering into his ear. His world grew more and more gray until there was nothing left. So I believe this is still considered the caretaker ending, but that should have filled in some of the gallery. So with this one behind, you can see how to save the lab partner, and basically they have they go into the house of mirrors instead of the alley. That in turn should fill in with the empty space in the gallery, and now all that's left is the true ending. So with that, we have one last hurdle to overcome.